ever since I was 28, I've asked myself the same question. Is it possible for me to truly be me? Or do I have to keep adding what other people think I need to be in order to be me? And in 2019, I made the decision to jump ship from a full-time job that I've been working at for nearly 15 years so that I could jump into the world of personal development, jump into the world of, of giving back of myself to others. See, ever since I was 28, I listened to Automobile University. I listened to the greats. I listened to all of these people talk about how I could pull myself up by my very own bootstraps. And I listened and I paid attention. And in 2019, it looked like it was my time to jump ship. Didn't know what was going to happen in 2020. But it was September of that year that I decided to pour the gas on my own life. I, I was like, yo, I'm going to start meditating. I'm going to start reading more. I'm going to start doing affirmations. I'm going to start doing every single thing that these mentors, these great giants of our generation and the generation before. I'm going to stand on their backs and I'm going to do the things that they say and I'm going to stand tall and proud and I'm going to be me. And I did those things. And after 30 days, I was like, yo, this feels so good. I'm going a whole 90 days. So in the process of the whole 90 days, what I end up doing is I get so good at meditations that I go deeper for longer. It started out as 10 minutes. Now it's 40 minutes. I'm going to walk around the block and I'm chanting and I'm doing my I'm doing my my fist pumps and I'm pumping myself up. And the walks went from 20 minutes to 40 minutes to an hour. I'm putting in all of me into this endeavor to become the best me I can possibly be. And everything I'm hearing is saying I'm going in the right direction. You're going in the right direction. You're going in the right direction. And I remember the Saturday I woke up and the sky was such a beautiful blue. It reminded me of those postcards that you get from Bora Bora. The beautiful blue beach and the beautiful blue sky. And it's just so beautiful that you just want to jump right in. That's how the sky felt that day. And I remember going to make coffee and my wife stopping me dead in my tracks. You need to go to the hospital. It's a beautiful day. I feel great. I'm not going to any hospital. For what? Go look in the mirror and then go to the hospital. I went and looked in the mirror and half of my face had stopped working. Half of my face, it just, I couldn't smile or anything. Like all the things that you think you could do with your face, I couldn't do. And so I was like, yo, I'm not going to fight you on this hospital thing. I guess I'll go. Got in the car and I drove to the hospital. I got to the hospital and at the hospital, they asked me two questions. What's your name and what's going on with you? My name is Danny Calvin and half of my face isn't working. And they said, okay. And I went and sat down. And I did not even get to sit all the way down before they called me to the back. It was the first time I had worried. I really, really worried. Gunshots, heart attacks. Those are the only thing, two things that I know of go to the back in, in, in quicker than that. And as I'm going to the back, I remember the sky outside and it's a beautiful day and I smile. And as I smile, the doctor walks in. And he's like, yo, I'm happy you're in a good space. It's like, yo, what's going on, doctor? He's like, it's good that you're in a good space, so that means you didn't have a stroke. And I'm in my head thinking, I'm 36. How could I have possibly had a stroke? He said, no, you didn't have a stroke. You stressed yourself out. Are you doing anything to stress yourself out? And as I sat there at the doctor's office, I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't think of anything that I was doing to stress myself out. I was doing what all the personal development gurus said. Anytime I'd get low in mood, I'd stand tall. Anytime I'd get down, I'd, I'd get myself in a good mood. Anytime I would get low, I would make sure to get my state up. But that was what was causing me the stress. I had moved so far away from who I was to stress myself out. I didn't know that you could stress yourself out so much that half your face stopped working in the condition called Bell's palsy. But 
as I was sitting at my house that afternoon and later in those later days and weeks, I start to think to myself about a time in 2007 when I was in a hotel with my wife. She was just my girlfriend then. And we were going out for the night and she had to blow dry her hair. And I don't know if you remember dryers back in 2007, but those things would go for five minutes and they would burn out. And then it would take them 10 minutes to kick back in so that you can go back to drying your hair for five. And it was a process of five minutes on, 10 minutes off, five minutes on, 10 minutes off. And I never understood why the blow dryer acted that way until I had Bell's palsy. When half of my face stopped working, I realized that my body, my system worked a lot like that hair dryer. That if my system would not have shut down when it did, I might have had a stroke. I could have been 36 and had a stroke from stress. I didn't know that that was even possible. And so now I had this new outlook going into 2020 where I knew that rah, rah, getting it going, pumping myself up and getting in the state, although that may work for some people, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for what I had going on in my life and the things that were moving and grooving with me. And it's so interesting how happy accidents happen because it's January 2020. This is before anybody knows about COVID. Nothing's shut down yet. We have no idea that that's on the horizon. And I learned from a guy named Michael Neal that reality works one way, 100% of the time. It was a misunderstanding of how our systems operated, how we as humans work. Like my cell phone, Back when the first iPhone came out, I struggled to do anything but call people, email people, and text. Until I started looking at the manuals, reading things, and I learned how to add apps to my phones. And then I learned how to use WhatsApp and I could send messages across the world. And then I learned about Facebook and these different apps and I was able to put them on and use them. But until I understood how my phone worked, I wasn't able to do all these extra features and extra calls. And what was interesting was Michael Neal kind of sort of showed me that just like I didn't understand my cell phone when it first came out, I kind of misunderstood how I operated. See, I was under this misconception like everybody else that the more stress that I can take on, the better I was going to be as a human being. And I took on stress and took on stress and took on stress. And then my system shut down. My system shut down and I didn't even see the stress coming. But when I started to see that everything in life works inside out, not outside in. My world shifted. Everything in life shifted and I came to ask myself one specific question. And this is a question I would love for you to sit with. What if life had your back? What would you do differently? And what's interesting is I started asking myself that question and COVID shut the world down. We're walking around with masks. People can't go to grocery stores. We can't go to schools. Kids are on the internet and things are going crazy. And I'm asking myself this crazy, silly question. What if life had my back? What would I do differently? And I started moving through life with this sense of invincibility that I didn't know was possible. I started showing up more of the time as who I wanted to show up in the world as. See, I, I was such an angry person when I left my job so many years ago. I was such a worried person when I had Bell's palsy. I was such a frustrated person going into 2020. But when I started to sit with that simple question, of what if my misunderstanding of how I operate as a human being is something you and I and everybody else in the world has? What if everybody else has this same misunderstanding and they're trying to collect and accumulate stress and more and more and doing more and, 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 and sucking it all in and they're on the verge of breaking down and they don't even know it? That's why it even comes to my mind when it comes to being myself that life may even have our back. 
Because through the worst of my times, through the worst of experiences, through the worst of the things that have happened, would have showed up countless times over and over and over again. Is when I look at the world from inside out. It's not about what I do about a situation. It's not about how a situation affects me. Because what I started to see is I'm not even interacting with the world as I see it. I'm not interacting with reality. I'm interacting with the reality inside of my own head. And when I started to see that I was interacting with the reality inside of my own head and I wasn't interacting with the world out there, Personal development didn't look as appealing to me. Getting myself pumped up and getting myself ready to go for something I don't even know that I want stopped looking appealing to me. And what started looking appealing to me was being the father, the husband, the man that I've always wanted to be. Do I still get angry? Yeah, from time to time, yeah. Do I still get worried? Yeah, from time to time, I do. Do I still get frustrated? Yes, from time to time. I am a human being just like you. But the difference between now and before is now that I understand how my software works, how I kind of sort of operate, how I move in the world. Now that I better understand that. Those things don't look like the problem they used to look like. Now I can stand tall as me, as the Danny Cobbin that I've always wanted to be. Because it's not about what happened out there. It's about what happens in here. So I ask you one more time, if life had your back, what would you do differently?